Okay, section 4.8, anti-derivative. So anti-derivative means actually it's the opposite of derivative. So for example, let's say, uh, you know, you have a function, uh, one function, let's say x squared. Let's say name of this function is capital F of x. And then if you try to find out the derivative of this function, then the derivative of this function would be t 2x. Now, anti-derivative of this 2x is going back process, which is x squared. Okay, so anti-derivative of 2x is x squared. Okay, so a function, capital F, is an anti-derivative of small f. So in this case, the small f is 2x. If the derivative of this function is 2x, in this case, the small f. Okay, so <clears throat> but uh, if you look at another case, let's say g of x, which is x squared plus 5. Now, the derivative of this function g of x is also 2x. So as you can see that, if you go back, meaning going back process, so going back process of the derivative is called anti-derivative. But in this case, the anti-derivative of 2x is x squared plus 5. So the antiderivative, you know, you might have more than one answer. Actually, you might have, you know, you might you have infinite answer for the antiderivative going back process. Okay, so that's the reason what we say the antiderivative of any function is, uh, you know, uh, if capital F is an antiderivative of a small f, then the most general antiderivative of a small f can be written as this way capital F plus some constant. That constant could be 0, could be 1, 2, or could be any real number. That's why the antiderivative of uh, any function, you might have uh, infinite solution like this. So uh, these are the collection of some of the you know derivative and uh, going back process. For example, if you try to find out the derivative of x to the power n by using the power rule, you know, it would be uh, x to the power n minus 1 over <clears throat> n times x to the power n minus 1. That's the derivative. But now we're using the very same fact, but uh, because we're doing opposite, reverse. So uh, antiderivative of this one would be x to the power n. So why is that? So to check that thing, try to find out the derivative of this expression. So you can see that derivative of this expression is 1 over n plus 1 times you know the derivative of x to the power n plus 1 is n plus 1 times x to the power n by using the power rule so it gives us x to the power n so now you know we can collect all these uh, you know the der uh, antiderivative uh, for different known function so what is the antiderivative of sine kx k could be any number okay it's a negative 1 over k cosine kx plus c because the derivative of cosine kx is actually k times negative sine kx okay so whenever you try to find out the derivative of this column this column here it will be this one that's why antiderivative of these functions are very you know this thing so after doing a couple of examples couple of problems you will be able to you know remember this thing uh, so it's uh, there is a direct a direct relation between the derivative and antiderivative. So when you try to find out the antiderivative, try to think of a function whose derivative would be that particular function you are looking for, and then just add plus c. Okay. So whenever I need this table, I'm com coming back here and then try to use this table. Okay. So there are two um, you know things we can. Um, use here one is uh, if there is a constant times function and if you want to find out the antiderivative of this that is actually constant times the antiderivative of the function plus another constant and if you have the sum or difference of the function their antiderivative is actually sum and difference of the antiderivative of this respective function plus some constant this c only represents for you know some constant so in general so, because we know that there are infinite uh, antiderivative of uh, any function, so all those collections can be denoted by using this notation, this notation, and that's called integration, indefinite integral. 
Okay, so this is actually collection of all the antiderivative of f of x. So the collection of all antiderivative of f is called the indefinite integral, indefinite integral of f with respect to x, and it is denoted by this. This symbol, the symbol here, you see here, that's called integral sign. The function f is the integrand, which is you are trying to find out the you know antiderivative for, and that x is the variable. So whenever you see this symbol, that means you are trying to find out the all the possible antiderivative, antiderivative of this function f of x. Okay, so this is just a notation. Like we used to use d over dx for the for finding the derivative. Now we use this uh, you know integral notation for finding the antiderivative. But this notation means all the antiderivative. So you always have plus c. Okay, plus c in the answer. <clears throat> I'm going to show you a couple of examples here. So uh, find the antiderivative for each function when c equals 0. So you get answer in terms of c and then you plug c equals 0. So if you go back here, if you use the first formula, whenever you see x to the power n, whenever you see x to the power n here, so the antiderivative of g of x, which I'm going to write it down as an integration of g of x dx, is equal to negative 8. I can keep this negative 8 outside. And because this n is negative 9, 1 over negative 9 plus 1, that's the formula. That's coming from the formula. If you remember, antiderivative of x to the power n dx is 1 over n plus 1, x to the power n plus 1 plus some constant. So it's just a reverse of the derivative. You know, in the derivative, uh, we just multiply n times x to the power n minus 1, but in the de uh, antiderivative, you divide by n plus 1, and then the exponent would be plus 1. So here, in this case, it would be negative 8. It's coming from here. And then n is negative 9. So n plus 1, which is negative 9 plus 1, times x to the power n plus 1. So here, as you can see that there is an 8 on the top, negative 8. There is a negative 8 on the bottom. So x to the power negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. And make sure that because this c is equal to 0, that's what we have given. So, you know, this is plus 0. You don't have to write down the c. So if you simplify this thing, it would be x to the power negative 8. So this is the one of the antiderivative. When c is, uh, you know, uh, when c is 0, this is the only one antiderivative for this function, when c is 0. So <clears throat> that's how we find antiderivative of, you know, all these um, different functions here. So for this one, we can use the same trick here. So antiderivative, I can say antiderivative of h of x is equal to, it's 1 over n plus 1, in this case it's a 9 plus 1 x to the power negative 9 plus 1 and i don't have to write down c here because c is 0 it's given so it will be negative 1 over 8 this negative is coming from here x to the power negative 8 okay i can write down this as a negative 1 over 8 x to the power 8 i can always you know make it positive exponent if i want if needed so that's the antiderivative for the second one. The, for the third one, antiderivative is antiderivative of the, this function, this function, and then 3, and then plus c. But because c is 0, so just use the power rule for the first part, second part, and then for the third one. For the constant, if you look at the constant, if there is any constant, because for the constant n equal uh, you know, 0, that means the antiderivative would be uh, just x. Okay. Uh, there is any particular thing here? No. So if you see, if you want to find out the antiderivative of some constant, then that would be that constant times x. That's what we have to use here. I'm going to rewrite this thing problem here in next space. Kx is equal to uh, x to the power negative 9 plus uh, 4 times x cubed plus 3. So antiderivative derivative of kx is antiderivative of this one which is 1 over negative 9 plus 1 x to the power negative 9 plus 1 i'm using the power rule plus antiderivative of this is 4 times 
1 over 3 plus 1 x to the power 3 plus 1 I'm again using the power rule plus the entire derivative of 3 is actually 3 times x and then plus constant plus c but in this problem we have given that c should be 0 so now let's just simplify this this is x to the power negative 8 over negative 8 I'm going to write down that negative here plus it's a 4 over 4 which is 1 x to the power 4 plus 3 times x so that's the answer negative 1 over 8 x to the power 8 I'm bringing this negative exponent to the positive this is x to the power 4 plus 3x so that's the antiderivative of this function when constant c is 0 so let's uh, go to another problem it's here we are just trying to find out the general antiderivative meaning finally after finding the antiderivative of each of these functions we just put plus c so by using the very same idea by uh, you know that uh, power rule x to the power negative 9 that's the first one x to the power positive 9 minus 1 over 9 by using the power rule for the first one it would be 1 over negative 9 plus 1 x to the power negative 9 plus 1 I'm using this one antiderivative of x to the power n is 1 over n plus 1 x to the power n plus 1 plus some constant I can use this formula for any n except n equal to negative 1 okay so here because n is negative 9 so I can use the very same formula I can use the very same formula for the second part which would be 1 over 9 plus 1 x to the power 9 plus 1 and then this is the constant so it's a 1 over 9 x if you are looking for the antiderivative of constant that would be that constant times x plus c that represents that c represents for the you know uh, indefinite integral that's a general antiderivative so uh, here it would be negative 1 over 8 x to the power negative 8 here that would be 1 over 10 x to the power 10 here it would be 1 over 9 x plus constant I can bring this x to the power negative 8 uh, here on the denominator so that I can write it down as a positive so it would be 1 over 8 x to the power 8 minus 1 over 10 x to the power 10 minus 1 over 9 x plus constant so that's our final answer So I don't need this space now here uh, we are looking for uh, antiderivative uh, before doing this kind of problem try to simplify this if it's possible uh, you know trig function sometime they can be simplified cosecant 8 theta over cosecant 8 theta minus sine 8 theta you know I'm just going to you know try to simplify it if it's possible cosecant 8 theta is actually 1 over sine 8 theta I can use the very same thing here which is 1 over sine 8 theta minus sine 8 theta over 1 <clears throat> so on the top there is a 1 over sine 8 theta and on the bottom by making the same denominator it would be 1 minus sine square 8 theta over sine theta this sine theta and this sine theta I can cancel out so on the top there is a 1 on the bottom I'm going to get 1 over cosine square 8 theta which is basically second square 8 theta so after simplification this is actually second square 8 theta derivative so let's go back to that table and try to find out the formula which gives me the antiderivative of second square kx here k is 8 in our case so the solution would be it's a 1 over k 10 kx so i'm going to just copy that formula here the formula is integration of secant square k theta d theta is 1 over k 10 square k theta uh, plus constant let me just go back and double check it's 1 over 10 k k means 8 theta so no square okay so it's not the square this is this is not right so it should be secant square 8 theta d theta is equal to 1 over 8 10 8 theta plus constant so that is our answer if you try to find out the derivative of this thing it would be uh, you know secant square 8 theta now so sometime they give us a derivative of a function they also give us a situation like this 
the value of that function at 0 is 2. Find out the value of that function. <clears throat> s is the function of time here. So this is the derivative of s with respect to time. And you want to find out the s. So that means from the derivative, you want to find out the function. So that means you want to find out the antiderivative. So antiderivative of this one is, <clears throat> so you want to find out the antiderivative of negative 4, which is negative 4t plus antiderivative of cosine sine t, cosine t, which is sine t plus some constant. Look at here. The derivative of this function is negative 4 plus 5 cosine t plus 0. That's the same thing. Look. So if you want to find out the function itself from its derivative, that means you are finding the antiderivative. But we also have given one situation. When t is 0, the value of the function is 2. So when t is 0, this part is 2. So if t is 0, then what happens to this part on the right side? It will be negative 4 times 0, which is basically 0, plus 5 sine 0, which is basically 0, plus c. So that means it gives us the value of constant, c equal to 2. So now, for this situation, the constant should be always 2. So the function, you know, s of t would be negative 4t plus 5 sine t plus 2. So that is the function. If we try to find the derivative of this function, that will be this. Okay? And then if you try to find out the value of the function at 0, that will be 2. So this is how we can find the antiderivative.